this just for kids video. If you're having a little bit of maybe you just need to adjust King on your at the bottom of your tape player. If you need they'll help you. And be sure you sell. I'm going to tell you how you can get a free video. See you soon. My name is Joy. It looks like you're just in time for another human club meeting. But you'd better hurry into the treehouse if you don't want to miss the beginning. <clears throat> will the meeting please? I said, will the meeting please come to order? Come on, you guys, order! Be quiet! Be quiet! Thank you, crackers. <clears throat> we have an important decision to make. The Thunderbirds challenged us to a baseball game this Saturday. Are we going to accept? Yes, yeah, sure. Right. Sure. Baseball's always a nice thing to play on Saturday. Yeah, sure, I like playing baseball. But I hope there's a refreshment stand there, because last game we went to, there was a refreshment stand, and I got all hungry and tired. Quiet, quiet. Let's not all talk there. at once. That's better. Now let's get on with it. I say we accept the challenge, but only if I get to pitch. Why should you get to pitch? Because we won't win if I don't pitch. You didn't do such a hot job the last time. <sighs> Here we go burn. again. You pitched and we lost. Look, Big Shot, it wasn't oh, the pitching that no. lost the game, it was the fielding. You can this reminds me of the argument we had over the lean, mean pitch. machine. Oh, Precisely. Yeah, I pitch circles around you any day. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. I remember the lean, mean machine. And I remember the argument that Casey and Pam are referring to. As I recall, this is how it happened. Let's not forget that winning isn't everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, Pamela. Winning isn't everything, but it sure beats the heck out of losing. And win is exactly what we're gonna do. All right. <laughs> Casey, also ecstatic with the prospects of winning, tried to stifle his giggling, but his enthusiasm could not be contained. There had not been this much excitement around the Human Race Club treehouse for a long time. The single object that had charged the air with what seemed like pure electricity had been appropriately named the Lean Mean Machine. The Lean Mean Machine was a wooden motorless go-kart that had been carefully constructed by the Human Race Club. It took the group a little more than three months to gather all of the vehicle's many parts and assemble them. As the club members stood in tribute around the magnificent go-kart, they fondly reminisced about everything that had taken place in the course of the last few months. Teddy spoke in reverent tones. Can you believe what we just accomplished? 
Look at that go-kart. And all because we work together as a team. As far as I'm concerned, we should feel proud of ourselves. All right, everybody! Woo! Good job! Yay! When things finally calmed down, Casey asked innocently. Gee, since this go-kart was such a team effort, mm -hmm. how are we going to decide who gets to drive it in mm -hmm. tomorrow's race? The race Casey referred to was the Hometown Go-Kart Derby, held annually on the town's steepest hill. Its paved street was closed off one day a year, so the special event could take place. Cash prizes were awarded to the winners. According to an announcement in a local newspaper, $200 would be given to this year's first place winner, $100 would be given for second place, and $50 for third. Maggie confidently answered Casey's question. Everybody already knows who's driving in tomorrow's race. Oh, yeah. Who? Don't you remember who came up with the idea of building a go-kart? Maggie's comment triggered Pamela's thinking. Hmm. The answer to that question would require a bit of research. After all, go-karts have been in existence for years. That's not what I mean, Pamela. I'm talking about the person who suggested that we build a go-kart. If you remember, I saw the newspaper article. I told you guys about it, and I suggested that we enter the derby. That's why I should be the one to drive in tomorrow's race. I should get to drive. She may have I was the one that found a good game. It was as though Maggie had they set off a string of there. firecrackers in the middle of the gathering. The group exploded into a series of arguments. Well, Each I club know. member was yelling why he or she but should be the one to I drive in the derby. Be the one to drive the go -kart. Only I Pamela remained drive. silent. She tried to block out the bickering by putting her hands over her ears, but it was no use. Finally, when she could stand it no longer, she jumped into the middle of the group and yelled as loud as she could. Everyone, listen to me! The sound of Pamela's shrill voice stunned everyone into silence. Golly, Pamela, I never knew you could yell so loudly. Casey said respectfully. Then it was quiet again. Pamela took advantage of the silence and continued. This decision must be made exactly as we make all our decisions. We need to discuss it and then vote on it. Pamela's right. Let's go into the treehouse and settle this disagreement in a civilized manner. The club members were climbing into the treehouse when Teddy's mother called out to them. Teddy! Maggie's mother just phoned. She wants Maggie to come home for her piano lesson. Oh, rats! I hate those stupid piano lessons. Maggie, your lesson's only 30 minutes long. Why don't you come back when it's over? That's a good idea. We won't make any major decisions while you're gone. Okay, Maggie? Oh, well, I guess that's what I'll have to do. See you guys later. Reluctantly, Maggie left. When Maggie came back to the treehouse almost an hour later, she found a note posted on the door. It read, We went to buy some stuff to eat. We'll be back soon. Maggie decided to wait for the club members to return. As Maggie wandered impatiently around the treehouse, she came across the notebook that contained the club minutes. It lay open to a page of notes that Pamela had written that day. Maggie skimmed through the words. When she got to the last sentence on the page, she shook her head in disbelief. The sentence read, in regard to the derby, it was decided that Teddy would be the one. Maggie could feel her blood beginning to boil as she talked out loud to herself. So they weren't going to make any major decisions without me, huh? She threw the notebook down and paced around the treehouse like a tiger in a cage. The more she thought about the situation, the angrier Maggie became. Finally, she climbed down from the treehouse and walked over to the lean, mean machine. She grabbed the rope that was attached and pulled the go-kart to the sidewalk in front of Teddy's house. Nobody's gonna tell me I can't drive in the derby. I'll show them. 
Maggie said through clenched teeth. She climbed into the go-kart, and immediately it began to roll. As the lean, mean machine picked up speed, Maggie realized that she was losing control of it. The go-kart was heading toward the big oak tree at the end of the block when Maggie, panic-stricken, let go of the steering wheel and crouched down in the driver's seat. Seconds later, Maggie felt a tremendous thud as the lean, mean machine crashed into the oak tree. A stunned Maggie crawled out of the go-kart to survey the damage. Oh, no! Maggie knew immediately that the go-kart's right front wheel was beyond repair. She had just finished positioning the go-kart to hide the damage when she heard a familiar voice. Well, if it isn't the Human Race Club's very own concert pianist. <laughs> the club members chuckled at AJ's remark and waited for Maggie to respond. Surprisingly, she said nothing. After a long and comfortable pause, Teddy suggested... Uh, let's get back to our meeting. Once again, the club members assembled together in the treehouse. Teddy was the first to speak. Maggie? I know I promised we wouldn't make any major decisions while you were gone, but we just couldn't wait for you to get back. Pamela, would you please read the minutes of our meeting to Maggie? Pamela opened the notebook to the fateful page that Maggie had read. She began reading the last sentence on the page. <clears throat> In regard to the derby, it was decided that Teddy would be the one. Pamela paused long enough to turn the page, and then she continued. To get the lean, mean machine to the race, and Maggie will be the one to drive it. All eyes turned toward Maggie. But instead of seeing the wildly excited person they expected to see, the club members saw a sullen Maggie sitting in silence, staring at the floor. After a few moments, Casey said, Gee whiz, Maggie. We thought you wanted to be the one to drive in the derby. Maggie solemnly rose to her feet and motioned for the club members to follow her. She led them out of the treehouse to where the go-kart stood. When Maggie pointed to the crumpled wheel, everyone gasped in horror. <gasps> oh, my no. goodness. Fighting back, Maggie told her sad, embarrassing story. When she finally finished, she broke into sobs. <laughs> I shouldn't have gotten so angry. Maggie wailed. <laughs> Pamela put her arm around Maggie in an effort to reassure her. There's nothing wrong with getting angry. We all get angry once in a while. Yeah, like right now, I feel pretty angry about that bit up wheel. Teddy nudged A.J. and whispered, Be quiet! Can't you see how upset Maggie is? Reflecting on Pamela's remarks, Casey added, Joy always says there is no such thing as a bad feeling. There are only bad ways to handle feelings. Soon it became obvious the meeting was over. They vowed they would have their go-kart repaired and ready for next year's derby. Meanwhile, the lean, mean machine took on a whole new meaning. Sitting beneath the treehouse, the go-kart served as a constant reminder of what can happen when emotions are not handled properly. This message had cost the Human Race Club $200, and only time would tell whether or not they got their money's worth. So what can we learn from all of this? Maggie learned the hard way that uncomfortable feelings can cause a lot of problems if they aren't handled properly. There are several things that Maggie could have done to prevent the disaster that was the result of her uncontrolled anger. 
Maggie. Obviously. Maggie did not realize that a decision affecting a group of people needs the approval of the entire group. Maggie had no right to assume that she'd be driving the go-kart in the derby. This was a decision that should have been made by all of the club members. Maggie jumped to conclusions too quickly. It is important to have all the facts about something before forming an opinion. It would have been better for Maggie to give the club members a chance to explain what she had read in Pamela's notebook before she acted on her emotions. Maggie learned that uncomfortable feelings need to be handled in acceptable ways. It is not acceptable to do anything that would hurt yourself, hurt others, or damage or destroy anyone's property. The last time I saw the go-kart, it was being fine-tuned for another big derby in a neighboring town. Maggie had replaced the wheel she had destroyed, and the go-kart looked better than ever. It's just about time for the meeting to be over. Why don't we go back inside the treehouse to see what's happening? Okay, AJ. Why don't I pitch the first five innings, and you pitch the last four? Four? Why don't I pitch the first four, and you pitch the last five? Ah, uh, okay. That sounds fair. Okay, it's time to vote. All in favor of AJ pitching the first four innings, and Maggie pitching the last five, say aye. Aye! All opposed, say no. Guys, have it! Yeah. Woo. AJ and Maggie, I'm proud of the way you both handled the situation. Both of you are getting pretty angry, but you talked things out, and look what happened because you did. I guess you're right, Pamela. That's a lot of odd one. Well, I guess that wraps things up for today. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I make a motion that the meeting be adjourned. I second the motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The ayes have it. The meeting is dismissed. I'll see all of you at the game on Saturday. When we cream the Thunderbird! We're talking. Yeah! <laughs> time yet? The words right out of my mouth. It's time for refreshments. You get to be first. I get to be first. You were first the last time. No, it wasn't you. Were. What? I don't need the last time. AJ, you always have refreshments. You usually eat more than anybody else. No, I don't. Casey eats more than me. Here we go again. Oh, well, nobody's perfect. And Maggie and AJ are definitely making progress. But anyway, I'm glad you came to the meeting today. And I hope I'll then add. Here's a song that will help you remember the things we talked about today. It's called Uncomfortable Feelings. Maggie, how's it going? Uh I shouldn't let it get me down. After all, tomorrow is another day. I'm home. Anybody here? Another afternoon alone.
feel so numb. AJ, I don't want to alarm you, but I just saw your little sister playing with your new radio, and it was in several pieces. Oh, just wait till I get my hands on her. If you'd like us to send you a free Just For Kids video, here's all you need to do. Collect six of our Just For Kids videos and send us the proof purchase for each. On what to do, Kids, Woodland Hills, California, 91367. to do, and we'll send you a free Just For Kids video featuring some of our most popular characters. Be sure to look for the other Just For Kids videos in your store. See you next time. You're about to meet the biggest, most lovable creatures ever, Samson and Sally, in The Song of the Whale. As for Samson, he may be the littlest whale in her, or gets into bigger trouble. <laughs> Unfortunate find, get whales out of head! Slow, you monster! Keep down. <laughs>
Get behind me. Sadly, she comes in. Orphaned by the hunters, she's adopted by Samson's herd. But thanks to him, she's not sad for long. Oh, I like being with you. Samson, you're nice. Oh, well, so are you. Let's play together like this forever. Just the two of us. Like... That's how it stays. Nice and peaceful. That is until they hear the legendary tale of the mightiest whale of them all, Moby Dick. Hey, white whale! Since Moby Dick is real, Samson decides this great white giant is the only one who can save all of today's whales from destruction. And off he goes, the littlest whale in the biggest sea, in search of his hero, on and on, until at last he reaches that place where the sun goes down and finds the city under the sea, the home of Moby Dick. Critically acclaimed the world over, this theatrically released Features winning, but awards as well, including first prize of the jury at the Animation Festival of France, special prize of the jury at the Children's Youth Festival of Lyon, and best children's film at the Tomar Children's Youth Festival of Portugal. Need we say more? To find out yourself what's got the red world jumping joy, don't miss the incredible 70 minute animated Samson Sound and the Song of the Whale. Here's Siebert, the prestigious award-winning and successful series that's been a favorite with children across the country. Now, kids everywhere can savor the magic of this beloved little seal in his very first feature-length home video release. It's Siebert, The Adventure Begins, a four-episode movie-long entry that introduces to this baby seal's world. Children will cast off for an exciting trip to snow-covered Greenland. Greenland? To meet Siebert and his cast of irresistible sea friends, together, our star pal Tommy battle the predators of these cuddly white creatures. Dedicated to protecting endangered animals everywhere, this acclaimed series is truly entertaining and educational. A great combination for the whole family. So meet Siebert, everyone, a brand new entry who's here to stay. In his movie-length debut, Siebert, The Adventure Begins. Thank <laughs> you.